You are watching Chomp on This with me, Kim Lai, and I'm so excited that you guys tune in every week to watch these cooking shows. It's, um, it's a lot of fun. We're going to change some things up for next week. So I just wanted to put that out there. I'm going to put it out there again at the end of the show. Okay, you guys, um, I'm sure, can you, wait, well, let me just double check. Can you guys hear me and see me before we get started? If you can, just go ahead and do a little thumbs up. It's down, I know I keep doing the opposite corner. There's a, no, it's opposite of what I think. So over here in the corner, <laughs> there's a little button and you can push it and a whole bunch of icons will come flying out. So you can do thumbs up, you can do little hearts, um, you can do, oh, what were some of the others? Is it like, I think it's like, 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 and it just shoots all over the place. Oh, oh good, good, good. <laughs> Okay, perfect. All right. Also, you guys, during the show, if you want to um, ask a question or leave a comment um, for me to be able to see big here on the screen, it, all you have to do is type the, the at symbol and then post and then your question or comment and it will fly right across the screen so I'll be able to see it while I'm cooking. Okay. So today, you guys, I want to show you how to make a one pot meal in a crock pot. Now, I think that crock pots are insanely underused and they're super easy to use. So I don't know why they're not used more often. Um, I don't, my mom never really used a crock pot when I was little, but I know that there's, a, it's like your grandmother's grandmother's kitchen tool. Okay. So what we're going to make today is a beef shank one pot meal, you guys. So the ingredient list is, um, I've got some beef shanks here. Now, okay, so beef shanks, we have some garlic, some onions, I'm using a yellow onion. I'm using potatoes, just reset potatoes and carrots. And my herbs are going to be parsley and rosemary. Now, I'm using just chicken broth for the stock. But first, I want to tell you guys, uh, we, I want to sear the meat a little bit. It's not necessary to sear the meat. It is an extra step, but I'm going to tell you, it adds great color to the meat, and it's, it, it, it gives it more depth, more flavor, if you just sear it a few minutes on each side. So I'm going to sear it in some coconut oil, just to give it a little bit, well, of a coconut essence. <laughs> Okay, mmm, it smells so good. I've already heated up my pan, or started heating up the pan, so it might sizzle just a bit. That coconut in there. Now, I chose beef shank. You guys, the beef shank is, it's on the leg. So like, the cow, it's, it's gonna be right here. <laughs> I so should have used a graphic for this. The beef shank is going to be the leg part of the cow. So it's a really lean cut. It's a very inexpensive cut. And it's also a very tough cut, which makes it perfect for putting into a crock pot or just cooking it really slow. You wouldn't at all go, hey, does anyone want to come over? Or I'm going to put some beef shank on the grill and we'll have some wine. It's, it's not that kind of meat. It does need to be cooked for a long period of time for it to really become tender, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just put in pan. Um, five minutes, five minutes on each side. You're just, what you're looking for, you guys, is a nice brown seared out of oil, all right? It's gonna be delicious. So while that is cooking, here, I'm gonna show you guys a quick picture, okay? This, bam, right there. This is what it's gonna look like, well, this is what it looks like <laughs> right now, okay? Uh, let me get that off. Okay, yay, I'm so excited. This is one of my, um, I love using the crock pot because it makes so much and it's so expensive and really lets me play around with um, different cuts of meat. You guys, another thing with the beef shank is the bone 
and the marrow that's in the bone. Okay, so like how interesting is this? It's like beef shank is one of the most inexpensive cuts of beef. I think I paid a dollar ninety nine for a pound. Yeah, it was a dollar ninety nine pound. And this right here is about two, about two and a half pounds. Okay, but bone marrow is like it's like a delicacy, and it's super high in fat. It's really creamy. It has a lot of vitamins and minerals, and it's expensive. But when this is in the crock pot, you're going to see it's going to be so um. But how do you say it's gonna be cooking for so long that that bone marrow is literally just gonna come out. Now you guys know what I'm talking about? Bone marrow. This right here, this is a bone and this is the marrow, but the marrow has been taking taken out. So of course it makes it look a little fancy. But the flavor of marrow is whatever flavor of your herbs and your spices. So it takes on the flavors that it surrounds it. Okay, so fiche, bone marrow, delicacy, super delicious. <laughs> I'm feeling very over animated today. Woo! Okay. Crock pot. Now, I love my crock pot. This is my second crock pot. I tend to use, you guys know, I love kitchen tools, kitchen accessories, things to make kitchen time more simple. So, the crock pot, like you're going to put everything in here, and in about five, six hours, you're going to end up with pure delicious. All right, so I've already washed these potatoes. Now I'm just going to cut them up. I'm using five, okay? Five potatoes, and you're going to cut these up. And I want, oh, God, you can see. I want to cut the, um, the size as consistent as possible because, one, it's going to help us to cook more even, more evenly, more even. Hmm. And then I don't like, you know when people plate things sometimes and like a big, huge chunk of potatoes, a little chunk of potatoes. I think it just makes it easier to eat as well when things are in consistent bite-sized pieces. How's that? <laughs> All right. Five. These are medium size. These are by no means ginormous spuds. Okay. Let's chop them up. Number five. Okay, it smells good. Cooking this in the coconut oil smells amazing. Anything cooked in coconut oil smells amazing. All right, now the crock pot, you guys, there's a trick to layering. They know most of the heat comes from the bottom of the pot. So you want to put your root vegetables, um, root vegetables, carrots, celery, things that are vegetables that are more hearty. You want. <laughs> I don't know, I said that. <laughs> Things that are more hearty, um, you want to put them on the bottom. Because remember, this is going to be cooking for six hours. I am going to put it in for six hours, not five. We're using two and a half pounds of the meat. So I'm layering, the first layer um, is going to be the potatoes. I chop those up in consistent bite-sized pieces. See? Now we have the carrots. Boom. Carrots are already washed. However, I'm going to peel the outer layer. Um, outer layer is a little bit bitter. Really fibrous. I don't like it. It's not pretty. Does not need to be in my pot. But look how much greater that is. Look. Bam. Bam. Oh, which one would you pick? Huh? Which one? This one. So just go ahead and take out or take off. The outer layer with your vegetable peeler, just like that. I'm using three carrots. I like to buy my carrot spice in bulk. Um, I don't know why. There's no reason you can get five pound bags of them. You can get a, a one pound bag of carrots. You can get uh, the bunches of carrots. I just prefer that. All right, well, let's check on the meat. You guys, when you're picking, oh, look, look at that, you guys. Mm. Okay, this is good, this is good. When you're picking out meat, you guys, you're looking for fur, you're looking for fur, you're looking for color. So a pretty, it's not, well, it's like a flat maroon color, but if it looks like a grayish color or a really um, 
Oh, you know what it looks old and smell. If it smells like, I was gonna say stank, what, whatever, meat stank, or it's like a gray color, don't buy it. I actually went to the butcher and asked him for the meat because it, I wasn't like really pleased with the selection. It was out, out in the open. Okay. Heavy the carrots, you guys. Same thing. I want pretty consistent pieces, chunks. So everything does cook evenly. Plus I like bite size. You know when you're eating something, I don't like things to be, um, take a lot of work to eat something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so three medium sized carrots. Then I'm going to put those in right on top of the potatoes. Pretty, look. See that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Potatoes first, then your carrots. All right, now I'm going to throw some garlic cloves in. Now I'm going to bleed these whole. I'm not dicing them, I'm not slicing, I'm not going to mince. I'm going to put a call, let's see. I love garlic. One, two, three, four, five. Five full cloves of garlic. Pop them in. Now remember, just put the knife on top and give it a little whack, and it's going to release that outer layer of really fine paper. So we have a nice garlic clove. I love the smell of garlic too. It's amazing how yummy garlic is, especially when it's been sitting in a crock pot for so many hours with all the other yummy vegetables and meats. Okay, I want to turn this over. So I need the meat turned over. Oh, this is great. Oh, you guys, look, beautiful, beautiful. Just give it a nice sear on both sides before we put it into the core pot. Mm. I get them all, did I get them all? I don't want to waste any. Crock pot's coming together nicely. Now, ooh. okay, now. <gasps> My least favorite green spice that we got in. Oh. There we go. I'm going to try to do this fast because I don't want my eyes to start to water. Okay, so I don't do this fast. It's not happening really fast. That always happens. When I say I'm going to do it fast, and then it doesn't happen. Okay, I hope everybody had a great weekend. This is an exciting. Exciting week, lots of food events this week. You guys are following um, my Facebook, my Twitter, or Instagram. This come up on daily, and you can check out the different events that are going on. I have to try some yummy, yummy breakfast. Um, well, it's like a brunch place yesterday called Blue Cafe in Studio City. Okay, so next I'm putting up the, uh, I'm going to put the onions right on top of the garlic. That's on top of the carrots. That's on top of the potatoes. Oh my god, my eyes. Okay. Woo. I know it seems like a lot of potato or a lot of onions, but the onions will sweat down to like nothing. So lots of onions. Okay, so I tried this restaurant yesterday. I have a friend Lisa called Blue Cafe. Blue Jam. No. Blue Jam Cafe in Studio City. Well, and I want to show you guys real quick. Can you see the layers now? There's four layers of goodness. Mm. But their French toast, their food was so amazing and so good. They have this like um, French, French, um, what do you call that stuff? French toast, French toast. They had, with like encrusted with a bunch of cornflakes and then they had this white liquid that was actually vanilla creamy milk goodness. Oh, 
It was so good. And then of course the strawberries and blueberries on top, which just was delicious. And then I had a burger. I just I always have to get some meat every time I go somewhere. And it was it was just loaded with delicious ingredients. But of course I'll be posting those pictures up later. But it's just so I love trying new restaurants. I love food, clearly. Okay, just a few minutes for what do we do? I think we did, I don't know, four to five minutes on each side. All right. Now, you guys, you're going to place, once the meat is seared, you're going to place it right on top of the onions, okay? Now, I want to show you guys, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. See, I didn't add my salt and pepper. Himalayan salt, you guys, just give it a little, little twist. I also want to add some to the crock pot. Now use Himalayan salt, so it's a little bit saltier than regular salt. So be careful not to over salt. I just want to add a little pepper. And add a little pepper. Generous amount of pepper, especially to the crock pot. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, first I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna use rosemary. Now, look, I wanted to show you guys this, how to store herbs. I like to get them home, give them a good bath, okay? And then I like to take a wet paper towel, and then I just wrap, look at how fresh these look. Look at how amazingly fresh. When I bought these a couple of days, these two I bought a couple of days ago. Rosemary, oh. Oh my gosh, this thing is so amazing. Okay, so anyways. Rosemary, uh, I use it just as a flavor enhancer. I don't have to keep the rosemary, but the parsley is going to go on at the very end. It's just going to be the top garnish. But you guys wash this. Wash your herbs. Shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, okay? And then you're just going to wrap a wet paper towel around the bottoms, just like this. And then you're going to put it in a Ziploc bag. Look at I, I just, these are two gallon Ziploc bags. They're amazing. And you just put it in the bags. Roll them up. Oh my gosh. And they stay fresh for so much longer than a few days. <laughs> okay. Parsley's the garnish. So the rosemary I'm going to put on top was to put the uh, bee shank into the crock pot. Okay. So we have our potatoes, the carrots, the garlic, and the onions. Now I'm going to lay the beef shank on top of the uh, the vegetables. You guys look at it. How amazing does that look? Yeah. Look at it. Ah, that's like a delicious chunk of meat. All right. You're going to set it right on top. It's perfect. Two and a half pounds is perfect for this. Oh. Now I made sure too yesterday when we were uh, at the butcher and she was a uh, she actually she was cutting up the meat and I wanted to make sure that each meat like I wanted the bone I wanted a bone in shape each one and she was like you want me to cut in half I'm like no, no 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 I want that beautiful piece of meat so this is now you guys what it looks like oh right there all right oh we still gotta put the uh the the, 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 the the rosemary on top okay so here's your sprigs of rosemary and I'm just gonna use a few rosemary is one of those herbs <laughs> that is super, super powerful. Oh, it smells so delicious. So I'm just going to lay those on top, just like that. All right, now, chicken broth. You can use water and chicken bouillon cubes if you want, you guys. You can use beef stock. You can use chicken stock. Um, I'm going to use about two cups, okay? So if you're using a carton, there's about four cups in each carton. So just use half a carton and load up the crock pot. Now remember, it's like creating steam and moisture. It's going to be doing that for the next six hours. So it might not seem like there's enough, but you are going to end up with quite a bit of extra juice. Just pour this in. So about two cups. Delicious. I think, you know, it's like their crock pots are just so amazing. It's like 
They're so easy to use. The cleanup is so easy. You can literally put all this stuff in in the morning and then when you get home, like there's a meal waiting for you. And it makes your house smell good. <laughs> That's another thing. And you can also cut down on your grocery bill because you can use really inexpensive cuts of meat. And because you're using the crock pot, they're going to be delicious when you're done. When this is done, when you're done, when those are done. Okay, so now we're going to set it to high. Um, let's tell you guys, six hours. Six hours, all right? Okay, so now you notice you do have um, a little bit of chicken stock left. If you're not going to use it right away, you guys, what I do is I'll put a date on it and I'll stick it in the fridge because I know that I will have um, 14 days, about 14 days, to use this up before it goes bad. Otherwise, you can freeze it. And of course, it's going to last you a little bit longer than if you're just putting it, you know, into the fridge. Okay. 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 There's that. Let me just make sure I got everything. Oh, oh, I wanted to tell you guys. Um, I, on Pinterest, I um, curated a whole bunch of crock pot recipes. There's like 80 um, recipes, different, like just different things that you can do in a crock pot. Desserts, um, chicken, beef, pork. So make sure to head on over to my Pinterest page. And of course, I just called it Crock Pot. <laughs> uh, but head on over to the Pinterest page. That way, you guys can get some great ideas. I love Pinterest for great ideas. So if you're on Pinterest, head on over, follow me, I'll follow you. And let's share some boards. I want to also show you guys one more thing. This is um, an infographic that I had um, created for a publication that I used to work for, and it just shows you the different uh, levels of how to layer um, a, a crock pot. So this is obviously using a chicken, but we are doing beef. But just so you can see, it's like your potatoes and the carrots, and then your meats, your stock, the, all of your you know, delicate roots, and then of course your uh, spices. Mm. Okay. So I need a few of these, parsley, a few of these. I need some parsley, because um, I want to show you guys. Whoa, okay, we'll just set that there. <laughs> I need a little parsley because I have one already finished. Just show you guys, because clearly we're not gonna be here in six hours. Okay. <laughs> I'm so excited. You guys, I woke up this morning to the smell of beef. And it was like, oh, it was it was amazing. <laughs> oh my god, everything is amazing. Okay. <laughs> so needless to say, I was super excited because I'm gonna get a dig into some of this today. Alright. This is what it's gonna look like when you're all there. <laughs> Wow, you have your beef shank, look at the potatoes, and you can't even see the onions because clearly they've taken on the color of everything else in here. But look how much, like you don't even see any onions. Remember I told you, like that whole large onion has literally like gone away. You don't even know it's in here really. So here's, you can lay this on the table just like this, your, uh, your beef shank crock pot delicious coconut meal. And then you're just going to cover it with um, some parsley. You guys can use American parsley, Italian parsley, whatever your preference is. Look at how beautiful that is. Okay, now I want to show you guys. Remember how I said you're going to have extra stock left over? Where is it? Okay. I told you guys you're going to have extra stock left over. Look at how much is left over. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. This. Go straight into the freezer. You guys can use this later for something else. Say you have some soups or stews. If you don't want to, there's a little bit of juice in here, but obviously there's not this much juice. So while it seems like you can put a whole lot in, you do end up with a lot of juice. And we can use it to create dishes, bases for dishes later on. Okay, so don't forget, put things in to the freezer. Use your freezer. <laughs> okay, I want to show you guys something else real quick. So you can eat this just like this, all right? But you can also, so say one night, okay, you guys know a crock pot is going to last, like the meal is going to last you like almost four to five days. 
So you might not want to eat it just like this every day. So I went and grabbed some. You know those Hawaiian rolls? They're in, in the orange packaging. This, they're little egg, egg bowls, egg dough sliders. So you're going to make crock pot sliders. Okay. So this is just another another idea. So you don't have to just eat it just like this. Every night you can get creative. Oh my gosh, you guys can make egg noodles and use some of the juice and cut some of the beef shake up. That could be a dish. You can make these little sliders. That could be a dish. So another night of the week. You could eat it just like this. That's another dish. Or you guys can put it over um, rice. Put over rice. Oh, you can put it in a tortilla. <laughs> there are so many different ways to eat this, and look how simple. It's like we're gonna do nothing now. How much prep was that? It's like what, not even 20 minutes of prep, and the crock pot is gonna do all the rest for you. Okay, but I want to show you guys. Um, I also have like horseradish. Horseradish goes amazing with beef shake. So don't be scared to try, you know, there's, oh, oh, like, okay, with pork, there's, like, pork cushion, that, uh, pork butt, beef shake, beef chuck, these are all inexpensive cuts of meat because they're tough, and they're on the working part of the cow, so they're tough, but they're super lean, and if you cook them for a long amount of time, you're allowing that flavor to really come out, you're giving the meat a lot Oh my God, I can see this knife, like you're getting um, the, the meat. It's like the depth is coming out, the flavor is coming out, and it's gonna be a pretty tender chunk of meat when you're done. Okay, so look, you can make these little sliders. <laughs> I'm getting so hungry. Make these little sliders. Come up like that. No. Oh my God. Just like that, okay? Remember horseradish? Ugh. God, I love bread. Oh, I love bread. Just love, love, love. All right. That's your horseradish. I'm just going to put a little bit or a lot, however much you want. I love horseradish. I love spicy foods. Oh, that's another thing with the crock pot. You can also add a little bit of cayenne pepper or a handful of chili flakes. You know, just amp up the flavor of it. And add a few more. Mm. A few more. Uh, just a few more. A few more spreads of the horseradish. Okay. So see, you've got your your bread layered with the uh, horseradish. Now look. I'm gonna just. <laughs> Do you see how easy it is to just slice right through the meat? Mmm. That's oh, good. I love that. Oh my gosh, you guys. You didn't even put this in French rolls and use the, the extra juice. It's like an au jus. Mmm. Another idea. We just keep going. We're going to come up with a beef steak recipe. Both of them. Okay. So this obviously, you don't even need a knife. This, the meat obviously clearly falls right off. Okay, load up your little sliders here, just like this. Mm -hmm. Whoa, you guys, bone marrow. Score. Loading it up, loading it up. It's a little messy. Load them up, load them up. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, uh. Look. You can even add pickle. Add some pickle to this too, just a couple slices. That's delicious, right? It tastes it. Mmm. Mmm. I need a straw for the horseradish. I don't want to drink that. Okay, you guys. So, what we made today is a crock pot, coconut braised, beef shake. One pot meal, which is, yeah, crock pot would be the one pot meal. So many different ways to eat this meal. So simple to make. You guys saw the ingredients, potatoes, carrots, onions, garlic, 
um, your herbs and spices, salt, pepper. Stick it in the crock pot on high for six hours and come home and this is what you're gonna have, all right? And then for all those bone suckers, you guys can just suck the marrow right out of the bone or use a little heavy toss spoon and scoop it out, delicious. I wanna thank you guys so much for uh, spending your morning with me in my kitchen for this amazing recipe. If you haven't already subscribed to my non channel, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. That way you will get notifications each week um, for upcoming shows. And remember, I told you next week we're going to start doing something a little different. Pretty excited about, so I'm putting it out there. Um, so you get excited too. <laughs> okay, make sure to follow me on all social media, uh, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter. All the handles are at Kim Live Gingley. And I hope you guys all have an amazing, super yummy week. And I will see you guys next Tuesday. Okay? Mwah! Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.